Thank you. Well, we have to Hey, Breck, do you want to lead us in the pledge? Yeah. You're standing up already. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Charles Lopsey. Here. Craig Scott. Here. Jenny David. Here. Roger Mango. Yes. Brenda Simmons. Here. Uh, ooh, approval of the agenda. Commissioners, did you guys want to add something? Mr. Hard is here from the Michigan Institute of Forensic Science and Medicine. I think he's anxious to say something to us. Where would you like to add him? Oh, new business. I don't know. I don't even have it up in front of me yet. Number one, new business? After. Be, uh, before claims? Uh, new claim. Yeah, why don't we do it before claims? You guys good with that? That's good. Commissioners, are you all okay with that? Yeah. Anything else? Any other additions or corrections? All right. Can we entertain a motion? I'll make a motion. For what? <laughs> I'll make a motion that we add. And approve it. Okay, I'll support it. All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, review of minutes. We got May 23rd, 2024 regular meeting minutes. Oh, any declarations? Sorry, guys, I got to slow down. Any declarations of conflicts of interest? All right. I have none. Why won't it go? Uh, review of minutes. May 23rd, 2024 regular meeting minutes. I've, I've reviewed the minutes. I'll make a motion to accept them. Commissioner Wilty? Oh. Any support? I'll support. Support from Commissioner Scott. Any further discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Anyway. Motion carries. June 6, 2024, Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. I'll make a motion to accept them as presented. I'll support. Motion from Commissioner Scott. Support from Commissioner Simmons. Any further discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, June 6, 2024, closed session meeting minutes. You guys want to read those? We just got those in front of us. I'll make a motion to accept them as a I'll support. Motion by uh, Commissioner Scott, support for Commissioner Simmons. Any further discussion? All in favor, say yes. yes Opposed? Yes. Motion carries. Public comment and agenda item manners only. Public comment on the phone, okay. agenda items only. Uh, correspondence, we received some from the Sabo Valley Community Mental Health Authority and the Lake County. Um, those have been received and filed. Agenda. Consent agenda, you guys wanna take these individually? Yes, please. Yes. Resolution to approve agreement for telephone service 7A. This is <clears throat> resolution is sponsored by Information Technology Director Tom Spencer. Telephone services to various Ogemaw County facilities, including fax lines, has been provided through AT&T. The current agreement with AT&T is scheduled to expire June 2024. The Information Technology Director research telephone service options available for available Ogemaw County facilities and has determined that AT&T is a telephone service provider best suited to serve the transit facility and the spectrum is best suited to provide services to all other county facilities, including the county building, sheriff's office, correctional facility, and the secret campground RV park. Approval of the resolution will authorize an agreement with AT&T to provide telephone services to, uh, to the Ogemaw County, Ogemaw Transit Facility and authorize an agreement with Spectrum to provide telephone services to all other county facilities. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. Motion from Commissioner Scott. Second. Support from Commissioner Mayhew. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Wolte. Yes. Brenda Simmons. Yes. Craig Scott. Yes. Jenny David. Yes. Item 7B, resolution to approve 2024 tax rate request. This resolution is sponsored by Equalization, Equalization Director Randy Booth. Form 614 tax rate request, commonly known as the L. 
4029 must be completed annually by each local unit of government for which a property tax is levied, including Ogemaw County. The equalization director has calculated and recommended for approval the county general operating tax rate to be authorized for levy on the 2024 tax roll. Agreement on the resolution will approve the 2024 tax rate request as submitted by the equalization director to set the county general operating millage rate at 6.0078 mills, permanently reduced as required under the Headley Amendment of the state constitution. I'll make a motion that we approve the 2024 tax rate request. We have a motion of Commissioner Wilty. Support. Support from Commissioner Scott. Discussion, guys? Any? Uh, Roll call vote. Charles Wiltsey. Yes. Brenda Simmons. Yes. Craig Scott. Yes. Jenny David. Yes. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Item 7C, resolution to approve a medical education affiliation agreement. This resolution is sponsored by Sheriff Brian Gilbert, Michigan State University requests to establish a program at the Ogemaw County Correctional Facility to provide educational opportunities for university's nursing school students. The university would provide a plan for educational purposes for the students, including the learning objectives, and would collaborate with correctional facility personnel to fulfill its educational purposes. MSU would be responsible for student guidance and direction and will orient students to correctional facility policies and procedures upon request. An affirmative vote on the resolution will approve the placement agreement with Michigan State University at no cost to the county. Make the motion to approve the resolution. I have a motion from Commissioner Scott. I support. Support from Commissioner Wiltsey. Any further discussion? All in favor say yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carries 70 resolution to approve a voluntary recognition of exclusive bargaining agent. This resolution is sponsored by the Committee of the Whole, Ogemaw County, the Ogemaw County Sheriff, and the Teamster State County Municipal Workers Local 214 are parties to a collective bargaining agreement that covers all full-time and part-time correctional officers, cooks and secretaries, employees, employees within the Ogemaw County Sheriff's Office. That agreement will expire on September 30th, 2024. In May, 2024, the Police Officers Labor Council filed an election petition with the Michigan Employment Relations Commission to represent the bargaining unit. Sufficient interest cards were presented indicating that unit members wish to be represented by the PLC and the Teamsters subsequently withdrew from the election and as a bargaining agent for this unit. Approval of the resolution will document the county and the sheriff's voluntary recognition of PLC as an exclusive bargaining agent for corrections unit members. The motion to approve the resolution. Motion from Commissioner Scott. Second. Support from Commissioner Mayhew. Discussion? I have discussion. I still have some concerns here because um, part-time corrections officer, cook, secretary, blunt within the Ogemaw County Sheriff's Office. I don't see anything in here unless I'm missing something that designates this is a totally different bargaining unit than the deputies at the Sheriff's Department. Because it says within the Ogemaw County Sheriff's Office. So uh, we've been through this game before where you had to have layoffs and then you you couldn't lay off deputies or anything because you had to lay off corrections first. I don't see that here. Somebody's got to show me in black and white where that is totally separate. Go ahead, Tim. Definitely we'll see that in the actual paperwork that's filed with the Michigan Employment Relation Commission. This is recognized as a separate and distinct unit from any other employee group in the county. So the a hierarchy for layoffs, if it were based on seniority, will only impact the unit that is the corrections unit. It will not include sheriff deputies or command officers. Okay. So they will be separate, even though they have the same business agent uh, and likely some of the you know same issues, but they will have to bargain their own contract separate and distinct from everybody else. When will we see that? It's already, that paperwork has already been filed with Merck. So when the PULC made their petition, they identified exactly which employees they were talking about with this unit. And what made it even, I think, more uh, uh, focused is each of the employees actually signed a card that went with the material down to Merck uh, saying that they were interested in that representation. So not only do they have the, the general number, but they have the signature of each employee on an election card to identify what unit we're talking about. Do you have a copy of that? 
I do, actually. Would you care to share it? I have no problem sharing that. <laughs> I would love to see it. <laughs> okay. But you don't have it now. Not, not on me. No. Nope. So you want me to prove something that I don't even have a chance to look at? This is one of those situations where you'll have to trust your administrator. I've seen the documents. I've seen all the paperwork that's been filed. You know what they say, yeah. trust is good, proof is better. I can. Well, then don't vote for it. <laughs> Best I can any, do it on short notice. Any further discussion? Uh, I, I was surprised that they didn't make this change back four years ago when the deputies did, but they wanted to stay with the Teamsters at that point. So I, I don't that's a hundred percent, hundred percent want to change over to the POLC. So the only thing, Craig, is I just want to make sure it's separate. You remember when it went on before you had to do all these before you could do these to, to, to lay off. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're saying, but yeah. that, that was, that was all under the Teamsters and those were separate contracts too. Well, actually this started out, the corrections officers and the sheriff deputies were in the same Teamster unit until three years ago when the deputies broke off to form their own unit yeah. and went with the POLC. That's what drew the, the distinction now between the two units. They were all one. Back all when Commissioner unit. Simmons was on the board before, they were all one. So the experience that she's relating to you is 100% right. That's yes. exactly how that uh, uh, seniority list would have worked. But now they're separate, separate and distinct. So they're dealt with as you know single units and not all together. I just don't want to go through an episode like that. Again, it's all, it's all why I'm bringing it up. That's why I'm glad they were read separately. I'm because I, I I I went through it before. Well, we have, I'm very yeah. skeptical now. They're just changing unions. We still have to negotiate a contract with. Right. All right. Any further discussion? No. Roll call vote. <clears throat> Craig Scott. Yes. Jenny David. Yes. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Wiltsey. Yes. Brenda Simmons. I'll trust you this time. <laughs> sure. Item A, new business. We have medical examiner uh, Brian Hart, Chief Executive Director for Michigan Institute of Forensic Science and Medicine. Come on up, Mr. Hart. Thank you, everyone. Uh, guys, for uh, not announcing that I'd be here earlier. I just kind of one of those last minute things and um, spoke with Ms. Delahanty earlier in the week. Um, basically here just to um, to see everyone. We usually have our medical examiners who live in the area who come to the meetings and and um, be present for, uh, you know, just to be present for any information. And I'm always uh, available as well. Um, as far as just some stats for the year for the County of Ogemar brought with me, uh, we have completed 13 total autopsy cases this year. Seven of those were accidents. Two of those were natural deaths. One of those was a suicide, three of them. The reports are incomplete. The doctor is going over those as we speak. The first uh, case of the year, uh, two cases on the same day, that was on January 12th. And uh, the most recent case of the year so far is uh, June 9th, uh, just last week or earlier this week. Um, we have hired, we're in the midst of hiring and training uh, we fired and we are in the midst of training for new medical examining investigators who live in Gladwin County and Okama County. Again, we always hire um, uh, investigators that are here locally so they can answer the calls. We have a vehicle that's here at all times on standby uh, in, in uh, Gladwin, Okama County area. We have received no complaints for, with uh, any services that we've offered here in Okama County for quite some time. And we have... Um, uh, very good relationships with all of our police personnel uh, here in the areas and the um, funeral homes, all of your funeral homes in the areas. Um, again, just here, I'm here for the entire meeting. Um, if anybody, I was, I was hoping to get here a little earlier and hit a little traffic on 75, but I'll be here after the meeting as well. Uh, do we want to touch base on, I mean, we all received the email earlier this week. Uh, there's been a lot of, um, that email was, I knew nothing about it prior to the email or receiving the email. Um, so we've been with you guys for how how long now? This is we're in our second contract, I believe, five years. This is our fifth year. So we're in our second contract again. Tim and I um, touched base uh, pretty specifically on 
uh, in that uh, email and, um, you know, the parties involved. Appreciate you. First of all, I apologize. I should have said I appreciate you showing up. We I asked Absolutely. to put it on the committee of the whole for next week so that we could, for one, all oh. be on the same page with this information. So mm -hmm. you coming and being transparent is appreciated. But there were some pretty serious statements in that uh, email that was made. Um, correct. I, and I believe it's televised, correct? Right. You um, had attachments. One was a, a Channel 12 news report. And the other one was from MLive, which was you know, more, more in depth. You know, in terms of uh, Dr. Stockman was the name. Correct. Correct. Focused on him. Correct. Um, Dr. Stockman is not involved in the day-to-day um, -day operation of MIFSM. I am. Um, the issue specifically had to do with paychecks. Yes. Um, we had, um, you know, as I, I mentioned uh, earlier this week when we spoke, there was uh, an issue where we were, um, we went from one financial institution to another. There were some issues. We all experienced them, myself included. Um, whenever there has been an issue, we've corrected it and everyone has been made whole. But, because there were some complaints even in the county, some certain individuals not getting paid, correct? In right, email? there were, were two uh, employees in the county, right? Yeah. Were they at the same time period? You know, that, like he's, okay. Well, they, well, I became aware of them both simultaneously. So I'm assuming that they, they're all in that same time frame. I'm familiar with one individual that was the individual that was in the report. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I don't know how much I can say, you know, about it, but basically um, that's, what can I say? Um, a former employee. That's that, fair. That, that left, um, it, that resigned. An so. individual can make a lot of uh, accusations and cause a, stir up a lot of things. It's just, Nice that you're here, um, but it was very disturbing getting all of that information in one email when we didn't know anything mm -hmm. about it. And it mm -hmm. sounded like some other individuals uh, were aware of it. Um, so surprising, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's a better word. No, I appreciate that. And um, it's been a long week. Um, that was <laughs> sure. very surprising to me. Um, <laughs> it, this started about 10 o'clock Monday morning. So, um, you know, I've okay. been in communication with the counties that we, take, we manage and take care of, yours included. Um, again, uh, all I can say is that our, our services, our, our premium services, that where there have been absolutely no issues with anyone in the county, and um, whenever there is a mistake, we correct it. I, um, you know, I'm, I'm available at all times, and, and as I mentioned earlier, totally transparent, and if anybody ever had any questions, they're able to reach me on my cell phone. I left that um, with... Uh, um, the administrator. And also, if anybody would ever, uh, this board would ever like to come down and see our unit and our facilities in person, um, you're always welcome. How many autopsies did you say? I'm sorry. And then I'll let That's everybody else okay. talk. How many autopsies? 13, did you, 13, 13 this past year? 13 so far this year, yes. Okay. Go ahead, Brett. Did you have something? I'm by no means bored right now with elections, but we have we have called and asked if my office if we could come down and do a tour. Absolutely. And we were told no, but I apologize I that you to. were told that. Um, Laura LaShawn is, is our new office manager. She's been there about six months, four to six months. Um, again, don't take my word for it. You can ask your constituents here. Everybody has a great relationship with her on the phone. I'm sorry that you were told that, but you absolutely can. As far as maybe there was confusion about viewing an autopsy as opposed to viewing the, the facility. facility that can, right. That because, can be. of course, of I didn't specifically is, call. I had one of my I had one of my girls call. OK, um, so that that. Possibly Absolutely, can you can come down and view our facilities, um, you know, on a non-autopsy day, and we can facilitate that with no problem. Other commissioners of other counties have done the same thing, so absolutely can. Commissioner Wilson, do you have something? Yeah, yeah, I was actually one that um, brought this to Tim uh, probably about two weeks ago. And Brian, I really appreciate you being here tonight. Absolutely. It shows a lot for what, uh, you know, you believe in as who you work for and, and what you're doing. But obviously we have concerns. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost a hundred thousand dollar cost per year to the county. And if we didn't look into, you know, the things that we're hearing, then we're not doing our job. So can you tell me the relation with Dr. Stokham? Is it because they, they tag him with the Michigan Institute of Forensic Science. So what yes. relation is there? Is there any, does he have ownership of this company at, at any portion? I appreciate that question. So Dr. Stockman used to, I believe, do my job before I started doing my job three years ago. Um, Dr. Stockman is not the owner of 
um, MIFSM. The owner of MIFSM is um, uh, Michigan Health Clinics. We are a subsidy of, of Michigan Health Clinics, of which I am CEO. So I manage, you know, everything uh, as far as the relationships with the with the counties and everything from kind of A to Z. That's where that came from. So, so he, he has used, he has no ownership. Entity rights. He has an ownership stake in Michigan Health Clinics, but he does not have, you know, so I guess in a, in a um, secondary or, or however you um, say that way, but nothing directly with MIFSM. Everything with MIFSM was, is myself and our team. Okay. We have a triple board certified. Um, we, we have a small staff as far as full time employees. We have myself, our office manager a triple board certified um, forensic pathologist who is your um, chief medical examiner and uh, his autopsy assistant who's a full-time employee as well, our investigators. Um, we have um, pockets of investigators in every county that we handle and they're on a part-time basis. Okay. So I, so I spoke to Tim about this the other morning. Um, I asked him that, you know, could we pay you guys quarterly? Yes. So moving forward, um, just because of this, again, appreciate you being here. Of course. But before we make that payment, there is going to be contact from Tim, and we we're going to verify that you guys are in good standings and everything is moving forward as it should. So you're saying as a CEO of Michigan Institute of Forensic Science and Medicine, yes. financially, your company is stable. There are yes. no issues. We will have no problems moving forward with this contract. Hopefully, no, absolutely no problems. Like I said, um, these problems sprang up, and it was something that was corrected right away. Um, when there is a problem, we handle it. And, and again, I'm very transparent about it. And, and like I just explained, I am, you know, kind of in charge of the, I kind of, I'm in charge of the day-to-day -day operations. Um, Dr. David Stockman, um, like I said, I believe he was in my role previous to me being in this role. Um, and he has an ownership stake of a company that this is a subsidiary of, but he does not have day-to-day -day, um, interaction with, with this company. Commissioner Scott? No, I don't have anything. Commissioner Mayhill? Did, did it issue with me? Commissioner Simmons? No. Tim, do you have anything? I don't. Um, you'll see in my administrative report, though, I did write in there that uh, Brian had offered to come to a future meeting. So this was yeah. this is pretty, right here. pretty sincerely apologize for not right. announcing. It was, I apologize. I'm sure you've had a really, really rough week. It's been a long week. You know, um, obviously, the media, public, of course, you folks understand that. Um, and so kind of um, answering different accusations and things like that. And, and again, it's, you know, we're transparent. So we want to be able to, um, I want to be visible and, and be able to um, give everybody peace of mind, you know, and, and like I said, you know, a very important part of this is the fact that we are in our second contract with the county and, and we, we really, you know, again, there's uh, nothing's perfect. And whenever there's an issue, I'll fix it. If I don't have an answer to a question, I'll find the answer. But, um, you know, we have no issues with um, any partners that we have in, in Oklahoma County, whether it's, you know, from police to, you know, homes to. You you, know. you haven't heard of any, correct? I've not. Um, the last um, uh, issues we had were uh, a couple of years ago now concerning transport was the, the main issue. Mm -hmm. And we had a couple of meetings and I haven't heard anything since. Okay. Under Sheriff, do you have anything to add? No, I'll take his contact and follow up with him. Uh, nothing, you know, we've been operating well. We haven't seen as far as the service. Uh, the reports back and forth is, is really the only thing recently that came to light, but we'll get his contact, follow up with him as far as our, our aspect of it. So. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, sir. Thank very you. Much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Appreciate it. Claims. We had claims of $290,032.59. I'll make a, I always do this wrong, so I'm going to do it right tonight. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve claims. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Mayhew is going to uh, support that discussion. Commissioner Mayhew and I uh, did review claims. Um, it's a quite large amount, but some things that, that popped up to us. Um, Software for the uh, uh, prosecuting attorney's office is on there, which came out of our ARPA funds for $57,400. Um, Workman's Comp was $27,000. Homeland Security had some things on there. There was a couple conferences. Um, I did have some questions, Tim. 
there were some reimbursements that's still on paper. Um, I thought you announced or, or that's all supposed to be inputted through the system. That's right. Uh, there's one I know that was submitted on paper, but we've gone back. It's in the uh, seamless docs now, so it's it's you know we're able to uh, duplicate that there. That's I'm only aware of the one, but there may have been others. Yeah, there was there was a few in there. Okay, I'll um, check those out because you know they don't all necessarily come through me, but um, that that is true. And we did uh, uh, state to the department heads at the beginning of the fiscal year that this needs to all be automated now. So I'll find out who they are and. Okay. Get a hold of them to make sure that they're aware of where the links are. Yeah, there's Homeland Security Workman's Comp was twenty seven thousand. Um, there was a ten thousand for membership and prescriptions for the sheriff's office. Debold insurance for cybersecurity was eleven thousand one hundred fifty three dollars. Um, we had a few questions we went to Tracy with. Um, do you have anything to add to that? No, we just had that one there on the the tax again they charge a sale tax right? oh it was a dollar eighty dollar eighty seven <laughs> <laughs> it was but was commission it wreck? um no i don't remember where it was but uh we, we talked to, we did show it to tracy so okay. it had already been paid but it was a dollar eighty seven again we brought another, up somebody's attention go ahead another one will be coming up <laughs> <laughs> so look, look for it um I just thought of another one we've seen on there Oh, I don't remember. Any questions on claims, Commissioner Scott? Oh, I have a phone to look at it, yeah. Um, Tom had some IT stuff on there as well. It was a lot this month. So that 59,000 ARPA was... Uh, oh, was <laughs> seatbelt. Oh. <laughs> we had to replace a seatbelt that someone cut off. Yes. It was quite a bit of money. For what? <laughs> it looks like it came from the sheriff's office. Somebody had to replace somebody's seatbelt that they cut off. It was quite. It was a couple hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Three hundred and something, I think. But yeah, you, you can't can. get anything done on a car without. We chuckled at it a little bit. Didn't we? What was that? I'm sorry. Oh, well, that ARPA fifty nine thousand. That was all. Um... 57.4 came from the prosecuting attorney software. Oh, okay. um, and then I think Our some pal. come out of Tom as well, correct? Some IT stuff that we approved. Okay. Cor correct. Right. Um, you know, the other thing, you guys will be shocked. I'm, I think Commissioner Mayhew has one more um, week and then I don't know who's doing claims next with me. But uh, you're going to see like the consumers, um, there's $8,000 in there, $9,000 in there. Like we really need to continue that discussion with um, some energy saving costs with some ARPA funds, like seeing those bills now, holy smokes. Um, and that's not the sheriff's office. They, I you don't remember what the 8,000, 9,000, I think it was one was for the county building. I think so. It, they're, they're a lot of money. Um, we just started seeing those. We didn't used to in the last couple of months. So whoever's doing claims with me next. Which bill? Consumers Energy. Oh. Eight thousand dollars, nine thousand dollars. Oh, yeah. I don't claims in general. You doing the claims next with me? <laughs> Just a minute, I'm trying to check that out. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> I don't want to make a mistake. <clears throat> don't come on. <laughs> we started a, a couple weeks too early. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did, but we we appreciate Craig. Craig and I did appreciate that though. <laughs> I was really busy. So you're gonna see more and more in there. Um, again, that that maybe some of you hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. Uh, be Commissioner Wilson and, and Chair David. Okay, then I'm on the fourth quarter. What am I? <laughs> you are also in the fourth out. quarter. You'll, okay. you'll start up in October. So, Commissioner Wilson, I do got that? Know. How can I can do it yeah. somebody else? Okay. <laughs> Anything else? I like Craig, though. Any further discussion? <laughs> we'll call vote. He catches a lot of stuff. Jenny David. Yes. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Wilson. Yes. Brenda Simmons. Yes. Craig Scott. Yes. Any unfinished business? Commissioners? Uh, Administrator, did you have something, Commissioner? I Scott? know of nothing. Mm -hmm. Administrator slash controller's report. You want to start by um, just uh, let you know I'll be with uh, Commissioners Simmons and Wilsey in the morning. We have a budget committee meeting and we are going to begin uh, hitting hard the fiscal year 25 budget. And when we walk out of the meeting tomorrow, my goal is that the entire group uh, has a very thorough understanding of what our revenue picture looks like. So we'll be going over some pretty specific things. Uh, a lot of things happening in Lansing that are positive, uh, depending on what plans are chosen. 
there are some revenue streams that we know are uh, jeopardized or have been reduced. So we'll be going over that as well. Uh, but uh, that's the foundation. If we don't know what our revenue is going to be, how can we put a budget together? So that's where we're going to start. And I'm pretty confident based on what we've already put together that the group will have a very good understanding of what that revenue flow will look like. A couple of um, expenditures that uh, we can already begin to nail down. Uh, I sat in on an employer advisory committee with the MESA organization about two weeks ago now. Uh, they went over their experiences for the last calendar year, so that would have been fiscal or been uh, calendar year 2023. But those experiences form the uh, lion's share of their decisions on what pricing will do in the coming year. We are part of a, a very large pool, uh, tens of thousands of people in the pool, and we definitely are benefiting economically for being a part of that group. Overall, the expenditures for uh, per individual that they insure went up 8% in fiscal or in calendar year 2023. Uh, of that 8%, uh, approximately 35% of that was prescription drugs uh, that went up. And an interesting thing on the prescription drugs as they break it down for us even further, uh, the entire uh, uh, cost on the prescription drugs, 1% uh, of those prescription drugs are what are known as specialty drugs. These are the drugs that uh, in effect, and to be very blunt, that if people don't take these medications, they will not survive. So they're that important, but they're also quite expensive. That's 1% of the total prescriptions that are written on the MESA plans, but it's 51% of the total cost uh, for uh, prescriptions overall. Uh, also, there have been uh, some other some new classifications of some of the prescriptions. Um, we used to have just the brand names and the generics, and now there's brand names, there's generics, and then there's another type of generic that is not, or that is more generic than the original generic. I don't know. I don't quite understand all the formulation of it. Otherwise, but, you're not uh, going to make it. <laughs> yeah. So Mesa, looking at this and realizing what how much the prescription drug price is driving the cost of the policies, they're going to offer us another plan for prescription drugs that are offered to our employees uh, starting in 2025, where employees can sign up for this third tier, which will be even more affordable. Now, for our employees, that's good news because there's potential if particularly you're healthy and, and uh, uh, otherwise not eating a lot of prescription drugs, you maybe can put yourself into a plan where you're not having to pay for that. Um, you, you'll still have to pay for prescription drugs if it's needed, but you know, it's just another option that our employees will have to choose from. Uh, I also am looking at what our uh, state has come up with on the hard caps for 2025. Now, remember, our policy spend, the costs on our policies uh, went up 8%. The hard cap number adopted by Department of Treasury uh, went up 0.2%, so not even 1%. So what that means is, while that's definitely good news for our budget because we pay up to the hard cap, not so good news for our employees because what will happen is uh, if the 8% happens to be the number that they, they raise our uh, rates by, and I don't know why it would be any other number than that, uh, our employees who are in the ABC group, uh, two, it'd be a, a two family and a, or two person in a family plan in one of the six options that the employees are having to pay out of pocket for. Starting in 2025, all of the ABC plans will have out of pocket costs to our employees. The other plans, the high deductible, high copay plans, where we are able to contribute to health savings accounts, well, that contribution from the county will be reduced to those employees because of the increase in the uh, coverage, but such a small increment uh, in the hard cap number. Now, I don't know what calculation the state uses to come up with a 0.2%. This is supposed to be based on the inflation rate. Well, I can guarantee you inflation went up more than 0.2% in the last year. So I'm at a loss to, to understand uh, how that uh, number came to be. And, and believe me, I'm not the only one. There's a number of my colleagues have voiced concern as well. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if there were a movement to uh, amend that statute so that we can calculate, just depend on what that calculation on that uh, uh, increase is going to be from year to year. The intention was that it would make it easier to budget, and that's all well and good. But I don't think that was intended to be done on the backs of the employees, or at least not the way it's worked out this year. 
so anyway, we'll go over that uh, a little bit more detail tomorrow, as well as uh, some uh, different scenarios for revenue sharing uh, that are coming about. Uh, we'll have some bills to watch in Lansing, uh, but there are three competing revenue sharing. They're all positive for the county, but there's one in particular that's coming out of the Senate that will uh, dedicate funds in future years. So we wouldn't be dependent upon the budget process, but it would put a certain amount of money into a revenue sharing trust fund. And that's where our revenue sharing will come from. And it would result in a pretty substantial increase for Ogemaw County. So we'll just have to wait to see how these all pan out. Uh, like I said, they're all good. They're not going to cut revenue sharing. So it's uh, a positive move there. Uh, Commissioner Scott and I went to Mount Pleasant last week uh, to, well, we actually toured the material recycling facility there. But uh, I learned in our conversations with our colleagues there that, um, well, we weren't a known entity to the state, as ridiculous as that sounds. Uh, we were not uh, receiving uh, in directly any information about our roles and responsibilities under the new material <coughs> management uh, planning process for recycling. Uh, all of our information was going to the East Michigan Council of Governments. So um, we were able through that meeting to get the names of those at the state to let them know Ogemaw County does exist and here's our contact information, uh, which was great, but now I'm on their radar. So at the next committee, the whole meeting, we're gonna be talking about uh, what they've uh, deemed or what they've called their letter of intent, which is due from all the counties right now on July 6th. We learned in our uh, conversations with uh, colleagues in Isabella County, that we're not really ready right now to sign off on a letter of intent because that would include having to consider uh, an agreement with the state about meeting their guidelines, but the state has not come up with those guidelines. So it's not practical for us to pass any kind of a, an agreement with the state to follow guidelines that we don't know about yet. So we'll want to uh, apply for that uh, extension, but in order to do that, that's gonna take board action. So we'll talk more about that at the next committee of the whole. I'll walk you through the process. It's very bureaucratic at this stage. Um, uh, there are just some bases that we'll need to touch there just to make sure that we remain in compliance. And now we are on the mailing list, so we will get this information directly in the future. And then lastly, you mentioned, uh, uh, yeah. Chair David, uh, about the workers' comp bill, uh, we saw a major increase in that bill uh, with this quarter, and it took uh, it took us by surprise. This is not the calculation that uh, we were given earlier um, in the year, and it's time anyway. Um, uh, we're going to already bid out our insurances for this year. Uh, I'm going to include the workers' comp on that, and I know Michigan Association of Counties offers through their MACPAC program coverage for workers' comp. So we'll get some competitive bids on this and see if we can't maybe uh, turn that curve a little bit too. But that was a pretty substantial increase. It's something in the neighborhood of uh, $27,000 more than our calculations have shown and more than what we've paid in the past. We don't know what triggered this. Uh, the claim was that there were some employees who are misclassified, but I look at the list, I don't see it. So uh, it, it's time that we bid it out anyway. It's It's been a number of years. So we'll do that and hopefully we'll get a better price for that moving forward. When does that contract expire? Uh, this the, And I don't know if it's the end of the calendar year or the fiscal year, but either way, I intend to have the RFP out here within a couple of weeks at the latest. So 2024. Yes. Any questions for Tim, Commissioner Walty? Uh, no, not right now. Commissioner Scott? Um, no. No, I don't have any. Commissioner Mayhew? No. Commissioner Simmons? No. The NOVA time, um, uh, payroll, uh, how did that go? Just like any other software conversion, we're finding all sorts of little things that need to be fixed, but that's why we do the testing. So this system, we literally had to rebuild from scratch. We went through this a few years ago when we first went to NOVA time, and now we're going to UKG, and we're working with their programmers uh, at Andrews Technology, it's, it's like a deja vu situation, you know, making sure that the uh, contract uh, holidays and, and PTO schedules and vacation time and so on is all in the system. We also have identified a time clock that might not be working. Our employees are going in and they, you're supposed to just put your fingerprint on it and it recognizes you. Well, this one doesn't, or at least it doesn't consistently recognize you. And in our conversation we had with the programmer last week, he said, this sounds like a time clock problem. So we'll probably be swapping that out. 
that's a fairly expensive piece of equipment. But as you recall, because we agreed to do the conversion early on, we got the time clock in effect at no cost. So we would get what we pay for, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's got to be changed out. And we have had uh, issues just listening to our employees with the dashboards or things that are that we need to see on the dashboards. An employee, when they call up their um, or call up their uh, dashboard, they want to know how many vacation hours they have or how many sick hours they have. And it just wasn't showing up conveniently. As we work through this with the programmer, he says, well, you just punch this button and this one and this one and it gets you there. Well, we want to just see it. We don't want to have to go hungry for it. So um, that hopefully is going to be fixed. I know Tom has been working with them on the phone app as well. Um, Okay, so it's it's moving along. At least we're seeing some action. I don't know that we're going to be able to go live uh, when we originally wanted to at the first part of July, but we we have had very good engagement with the employees. So I'm pretty confident. You know, there may be one or two things that go through, but I think by the time we go live, this is going to be a you know a system that's pretty thorough, uh, just in terms of being able to identify what kind of pay everybody has, what accruals there are. Uh, at least I'm hopeful. Good. Thank you. Elected officials and department head reports. We have reports on our iPads from the building inspections department, building and grounds department, and information technology department, register of deeds, sheriff, and treasurer. Clerk, do you have anything? I do. Brett Gildner, your Ogemaw County clerk. Um, yesterday, we held a election training. The Christy Dugan, who is basically the head trainer for the uh, Bureau of Elections, she came up. And we had all but three of our jurisdictions there um, to do some training. It was awesome. Like we really, it was probably the most beneficial training that I have had. Um, learned more to do with the new laws and everything. Um, one thing that stood out that I was told different information with, in regards to the disqualified candidates. Anybody that was disqualified can only run right in. They cannot do no party with their name on the ballot in November. Oh no. So I have sent letters to everybody that was disqualified. Um, with a write-in, declaration of write-in intent uh, form included, and then just some election law in regards to write-in. So uh, election night is gonna, I feel like look a little bit different in terms of that, because we're probably gonna have the most write-ins that we've had ever. Um, so it's gonna take a lot longer because we are going to actually need to count them when the receiving boards bring in their election packet stuff at the end of the night. Um, so that's gonna be a really, really late night, but that's okay. That's what we live for <laughs> in my office. Um, but all in all, the training was extremely beneficial and I'm so thankful that she came up to do that. Um, the last, week and a half I've been working on finalizing doing ballot proofs and um, all that we hopefully will have our final draft ballot our election commission is meeting Monday morning at 8 30 to do the final proofing of everything and then send it to our printer and we should have our ballots by the end of next week absentee ballots will start to go <laughs> out that next weekend um the 22nd is when they 22nd of june is when they're supposed to be in the hands of the clerks which they should be um this has been a very this week and next week is a lot of a lot of gears moving and it's <clears throat> been really busy and stressful but it's only two weeks and we'll get through it and how many disqualified candidates yeah, were there? That was my question. Um, I want to say I sent eight letters. Oh my goodness. Yeah, okay. yeah. And honestly, between my 
with my clerks uh, email, we have emails that go back and forth with my clerks group. There's a lot of disqualified people this time, but the form, <coughs> they updated the form. It was supposed to be simplified, but I don't know. There was, there was, I want to say I sent eight letters today. Cause I heard some conversation in the general public. I hope you don't mind for these questions. Um, no, I'm, I, the disqualified candidates were primarily because of the paperwork was filled, completed wrong. Correct. Correct. Who so or incomplete. So that goes when, when at the township level, we're talking at the township level, mm -hmm. when they fill out, say someone's running for supervisor, they give it to the clerk. The clerk is supposed to verify everything is correct. And then it comes to you. Correct. correct? So correct. ultimately the problem fell from the individual initially and then the, the clerk at the local level. Yes. They, in past administration experience um, with filings, there's a deadline of when the local clerks have to give it to the county clerk. I've noticed they wait till the last day. I can't do any, I won't do, I will not make any exceptions. If it's not right and it's been turned in and filed and it's past the deadline, I can't do anything. That is the other thing I heard was that the deadline, so it was, it's taken out of your hands at that level. If the deadline's met and here's the paperwork, there's nothing you could do. That's the other conversation right. I heard. Right. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner. And Wilson. we did have, um, and I know I've said this, I said this last time we talked about it, um, like West Branch Township, the clerk, he runs no party affiliation. He was one of them, not one of the eight, but nine. Um, I could give it back to him and he could refile it because he, he runs no party. And he, and he sent me an email stating he's running no party. So his deadline actually wasn't until July 18th anyway. So we were able to work that out. He's completely fine because he sent it to me in time. I was able to tell him it's incorrect. So he's good. Well, the ones that didn't send it to me until the deadline or after, it's out of my hands. Is that the same way with the West Branch Township Treasurer? Hers was incorrect, sent to me. I couldn't, that was after the deadline. I couldn't do anything. So she has to run as a write in. Okay, I, I, and, and the sad part of it is some of these people turned in their stuff in January, and the last day was when? March. April 23rd. April 23rd or 23rd. I, yeah, I was the deadline girl. <laughs> yeah, April, yeah, you were. April 23rd. But I went right they, to those stores. They, they basically but, had that for four months before they sent it to our, the county clerk. Correct. Well, they need to take that up with their clerk. Correct. I mean, that's out yeah. of. Well, some of them are retiring, so. Right. So I mean, are, question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Are these all township positions? Any, yep. Yeah. No county positions. There was one. There was one. Okay. Right. What position? That is also no longer on the ballot. Correct. It was the road commissioner, and I'm not. Okay. I'm taking blame. I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. I'm taking complete blame for it. Mm. Commissioner Wilson, did you have anything? Um, that's just it's surprising to hear that many numbers. That was going to be my question. Uh, like five, six weeks ago, in one of our meetings, I brought up the fact of okay. you know lack of community involvement and people not getting involved, and it's just kind of like frustrating yeah. to hear that. If some of these people are, you know, granted, you still should be more proactive. And again, I also waited kind of towards the end. <laughs> But I had some questions, and my questions were asked before the deadline, so I could make sure it was correct. And you both did but, come right to the source, and you did make sure right that it was good before you walked out the door. Yeah, I was undecided. <laughs> Just gonna put that out there. <laughs> yes. What about the primary election? That these people that uh, are not going to be on, on on the ballot, they they don't run at all in the primary. Then no, they they run as write in. They can run as write in. 
In the primary, do they run the primary, as a party? Or? They can do party, yes, only in August. But if they decide they want to run as a write-in in, in November, they can't be party affiliated. Okay, my question is this. They run in the primary election. They can be party affiliated as a write-in. Mm -hmm. Then the, that their name would be on the ballot in November? Right. They move on. And what have If they win. What happens if, if they don't win in the primary? Can they still do a, a write-in in November? Not party. No, I mean, not a party unaffiliated. And no, because the deadline is in July to, well, oh, for write in? For write in. For, for write in? They have to do, do a write if in. If they lose in, the, in, the in primary, August, there's a write in. Can, can they, do can they run again primary. in November? Did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Primary after the unaffiliated filing deadline? Correct. So they could file unaffiliated while they're still running as a write-in affiliated simultaneously. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, <laughs> I don't. She's I don't know if I want to answer any of these questions right. <laughs> Can you run affiliated and unaffiliated at the same time? No. Because you're saying if you lose the primary, could you still win in November as a write-in unaffiliated? Well, you would have to register as, as an unaffiliated in July before the August primary. No, I think the answer is no. She'll get back to you on that. I, I, would, I appreciate I need the, that in writing so I can dissect it. I think that's the question. No, I know, I know exactly what you mean. I know what it means. I think, I think that's the question you asked. Yes, it is pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Put it in writing and I will get an answer. I will put it in writing. Anything and, else, Claire? Yes, I do have one more thing. Um, I talked to Colleen Boyd today from the Skidway Lake Library and the Skidway Lake Library and the Prescott Library are doing voter registration drives. Oh. The end of this month. Um. June 24th, which is Monday, from 1 to 6, there will be a voter registration drive at the Prescott Library. And then Tuesday, the 25th, from 11 to 4, they're going to have one at the Skidway Lake Library. So anybody that is not registered or needs to change their registration, they moved, whatever, whatever the deal is, they are going to have computers there so that um, <coughs> they're just going to register. They're giving people the opportunity, the resources to register so that they can vote in the August election. When's the one in Skidway Lake? Prescott on Monday is one to six. What date is that? 24th. 24th. Of June? Yep. Okay. Skidway is the 25th Tuesday from 11 to four. 11 to four. Yes. And then they are actually, they, the National Voter Registration Day, um, it's in September. I can't remember exactly the date, but they're gonna do another one. Um, so they, they're, they're trying to get people involved, which I think is a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, if I can swing it, I'm going to try and get over there and just try and help if I can or answer questions, whatever. I have one more question. Um, Do the people have to live in that district to sign up to be a voter? No. So when you register online, it's the whole state of Michigan. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. There's 10 day early voting again for August. It there is correct? there is nine day. Oh, well, nine day. <laughs> August is nine days. That's August nice. and November. There is nine days early voting. Yes, and we're doing it at the county building. Okay. And the tenth day is regular voting day. The ninth. No, there's a day in between. Monday is nothing. Oh. Right. But so there's the there's nine days prior and then the voting day. So there's. 10 days of voting. Yes. Yes. Okay. Didn't mean to mix you up. <laughs> is, is I can put that right in. No, I. <laughs> no, I'm a toes. No, that is it. Under Sheriff, do you have anything? Jeff, I see you on the phone. Do you have anything? Uh, 
I have something at the cow meeting. Uh oh. Good thing. Okay. Anything anything else to report to us? Not at this time, nope. Thanks, Jeff. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Uh manners on the floor, commissioners? I have none. Motions for adoption? None. Commissioners reports. There's some on from the law enforcement committee meeting minutes, transit committee meeting minutes, and the housing advisory committee minutes. Those are appreciated. I did review those. Um, Commissioner Motzi. Um, a number of those meetings we've already discussed like last week. Um, I'd just like to add uh, most of my meetings are coming up, but I did have our Mills Township meeting this past Tuesday. Um, Highly attended, which is great to see a lot of people there. Um, biggest item right now in Mills Township is still the library situation. The library is open one day a week on Tuesday. Um, still really no real resolution or path moving forward where that's going to be headed. So I'm hoping that they can uh, get that figured out. But again, that's the only thing that's hurting down there. It's hurting our kids and some real important groups that meet there at the library that get some important things done. So that's pretty much the biggest thing going there. The parks, uh, the Skidway Park is uh, almost completed. All local contractors, looks beautiful. Um, everybody got a raise from the DPW workers to the board um, this past week. Um, you know, blight's a big, big issue there in Skidway. Um, our officer was not there this past week, but it's an item that, uh, I would like to see a lot of other Mills Township residents um, see taken a little more aggressively. I know that's going to be some things happening this summer there. Um, we just got to keep cleaning up our, our communities. We've got great, great community, Skidway Lake area, Mills Township's beautiful. Um, and we just need to keep cleaning it up. Um, they put a hold off on the Sting uh, $6,000 payment. I did speak to the new Sting. Um, the head of the sting and he is willing to be at their meeting next next month to uh i'm sure they will approve that other than that i've got a ton of stuff coming up um just a reminder for everyone really important our fly-in at our beautiful airport this saturday i think breakfast starts at eight yes at 8 a.m we got a really good breakfast i'll be out there throwing up sausages and Pancakes, and we've got a great people out there. Uh, probably expecting five to 600 people. So <laughs> jets flying in. So I think breakfast starts at 8, but it's this Saturday at the West Branch Airport. Um, and then just one more thing. I'm on the DHS, DHHS board. I was not able to make the meeting today. Tim, I sent you an email on that. We did have a board member um, step down. So I sent you an email on that. We'll have to move, figure out moving that forward. You don't be um, on the count. Yeah, call me. Okay. Um, that's all I have. The opiate committee, we just made. Oh, yes. Yeah. German opiate. Jenny and Tim, and we just finished that before this meeting. Um, it was really good to see. We started getting some results back from uh, the people we're working at Michigan State University from our surveys, from our focus groups. Uh, it was really neat seeing that information. Um, we did ask for one more month. Uh, we're going to get aggressive, trying to get a little, a uh, couple more meetings set up for people that are really living and fighting this issue that we have within the county and this opiate issue. So we're really hoping after next month's meeting that we can really start to try to figure out which direction we're going to head. And you know, we have uh, we got the budget back. Our our account is almost doubled. We have over eight hundred thousand dollars in there so we want to make sure and ensure that whatever we do the money we spend that it's going to be used in the proper manner so for years and years to come it is going to be help fighting to decrease this issue we have with opiates in the county and we've got a great group of people man some real smart people and it's uh i'm i'm proud to be on that committee and we're uh, hopefully here in the next couple months we'll really start seeing some some traction progress start being able to spend some money in the right the right ways. Commissioner Scott. Uh, I attended a couple of different meetings. The uh, city of West Branch, I went first meeting in the month, uh, <coughs> renewed their insurance that went up a couple thousand dollars. They renewed with MML, bought a, bought a new lawnmower, multi-purpose uh, piece of equipment. They use in the wintertime too. They, they also passed their four 
4029 tax rate uh, questions like we did tonight. Um, and property tax, uh, they had a property sale within the city. Went to a uh, road commission meeting. They're uh, looking at rebuilding a truck pit in their shop. So it's like everything else, they're finding out it's a lot of money. There was some, uh, there was questions about a road abandonment, Peach Lake Road in West Branch Township the two weeks prior. And they were able to find some records from back in the 70s and the 80s when this is this is up where uh, Peach Lake Road makes a curve toward uh, uh, Finnerty Road. And the original road went straight. And there was some questions on whether or not that was abandoned or not. Well, it was back then. People nowadays didn't know that their parents were alerted that it was abandoned. <laughs> mom, mom didn't tell them that, you know. Uh, I got to the Parks and Rec Board meeting today late, so I'm going to let Mr. <laughs> Simmons explain that one. Um, I, the only thing I got to say is you guys are going to have a budget committee thing tomorrow. Um, we made a diligent effort to get more money coming in, and it, and it didn't come. And uh, the voters said so. <laughs> so I think it's it, it's new budget new budget year, and this would be my eighth budget time. And the can is still getting a lot of dents in it, going down the road. And we can kick the can one more time if we want, or we can get down serious and start cutting to get our numbers in line. So you talking about budget? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. you're meeting tomorrow. You're meeting tomorrow. Just giving you a little insight, a little pep just, talk. We appreciate that. Just my own thoughts. That's <laughs> a little pep talks off. Like we don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind going public. We we tried to get more money. But the voter said no. So no. That's correct. We got to do it a different way. Is that all, Commissioner Scott? That's it. Commissioner Simmons. Okay, a little bit on the, on the Parks and Rec. Um, I am researching the water testing because it was very high. There was one that was fi over $500, one was over $300. Um, and my understanding was uh, they were told they had to use a particular company. My understanding is uh, I don't think they do, but I'm researching that now, and I will find out the results before tomorrow's over. And uh, the water well for the nature park should be going in next week. I just got that hot off the press from the well driller. Okay, uh, another thing, I went to Edwards Township um, meeting and uh, the uh, Amish are very interested in buying property in Oklahoma County, Edwards Township, they started in Edwards Township. And, um, and I did find out one thing because I thought, well, then they won't be paying taxes on it, but the Amish do pay taxes on their properties. And I did not realize that. I thought because it was church affiliated, they wouldn't have to. But no, they do. So, and my personal opinion, uh, you know, the Amish, they will farm the property and they take good care of their property and stuff. That means maybe there won't be wind turbines and solar panels going on all that property. Just a thought. Personal opinion, though, I mean, maybe the bombings love solar panels, I don't know, and wood turbines. Um, uh, sting for Edwards Township, um, <coughs> they received a uh, invoice for X amount of dollars, and they paid considerably less than the X amount of dollars. So they didn't pay the full invoice on that, what was requested from the sting. Uh, also, the proposal to build a Verizon wireless cell tower on Green Road. Are you aware of that? Has it been brought here on Green Road? They're going to put a. They want to put a cell tower. I don't know. You're in the planning. No, yeah, we haven't met, and we meet uh, next week. All right. All I know is a proposal to put a Verizon wireless cell tower on Green Road. And as we know, a lot of places here in rural Oklahoma County, it's uh, difficult to get good um, cell phone reception or even have um, internet. 
So that'd be wonderful. Uh, and also a positive comment. I'm sorry, our treasurer's not here today. But the treasures that the townships received uh, through the treasurer's office uh, recently, uh, nothing but accolades about that training. They thought it was, they glad they came. Uh, that was very interesting. They learned a lot. So I just want to let the treasurer know that. <laughs> That's pretty much all I have. Mr. Mayhew. Well, I went to Rose Township and I forgot my hearing aids and it was quiet. <laughs> <Pretty dry. laughs> but somebody from the library deal resigned. But I got that one. I don't know what she did or who she was. <laughs> they lost one. Uh, I went to West Branch. Oh, they got a Drain your water tower, I guess, a couple more times. We're going to paint it inside and out. And they would like that trailer house deal on Mays Road to come through the county. What trailers? Oh, the one they got a permit for that ain't right and ain't going to be right. Now they want to go with county statutes. They showed that in our lot. Really? Yeah. Why? Because they broke their own statute. They want to all use ours now. <laughs> that's a good deal. So we'll we'll hear more about that. But that's pretty much it. I had a, is that it? Yep. I had a busy my first week of the month is always I have four meetings that that week. Uh -huh. um, Hill, all my townships are the first first week. Hill Township. They talked about Le, uh, purchasing the Lupton Fire Department. I seen that was in your report as well. Yep. Sounds like that is moving forward. Um, they talked about the transfer station up there. They also talked about the gentleman who does the recycling up there um, and really bringing some light because they talked about the, uh, the, the what you just discussed with uh, Isabel County. Um, and it is interesting hearing this gentleman's uh, insight on the recycling um, and how often individuals are not educated or doing it correctly. And when you don't do it correctly, it doesn't work. So like the stats, as far as how many people try to recycle things and how many things actually get recycled, um, it was very, very, very poor. So they have a Facebook page that's up and uh, running now that they're trying to educate the residents in Hill Township as far as what kind of can't be recycled, um, how to properly do it. Um, and right, there was quite a few participants there. Uh, they're all home for the summer at their their homes there in the, around the lakes. Um, so they... They uh, talked about recycling for quite an extended period of time. Logan Township, I attended that. That was very well reported. I just read it in the paper. Um, settlement that they were having some legal issues out, over there. Uh, sounds hopefully that it's settled. There's some, a lot of individuals that are running out there for uh, Logan Township. Uh, yes, there are. Do you know I, anybody? And my mom. Oh, my mom oh, is running oh, here's supervisor. A little speech. <laughs> yes. She's running for supervisor, which is really good. The board needs to do some transition, some changing. There's been a lot of uh, unsettling um, topics. So I, I think it's, and you're seeing some political signs out there and some running. So I think it's 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 a uh, it's a good thing. Um, assessor was discussion. The assessor's contract uh, lighting around the the um, hall there. Um, they did not pay their sting bill. I I don't believe they did. I recall they denied that. Um, Richland Township that typically runs pretty smooth. Um, they also talked about the treasurer's training. Two of them participated. They would they found it very helpful. Some things that they weren't doing correctly. <coughs> campground is up and running over there. Uh, their campground at Round Hardwood Lake, which is uh, very nice. If none of you have been out there, um, there was an individual in the audience that was questioning the treasurer's report, which brought up quite a, quite a bit of uh, conversation that I'm sure. Uh, Next month um, will be a little bit more detailed. Just struggling with with following it. Um, Opiate committee just uh, attended that. Michigan Works is this upcoming Friday at the park in Gladwin. I attended a nine one one meeting last night. Um, we agreed to purchase a new system um, for recording purposes and redacting. Apparently, redacting. There's more and more legality with all of this, and it takes a lot of time. Um, it was a quite a large purchase. I think it was $57,000, $59,000. Um, 
911 is doing very, very well. Uh, a lot of upgrades. Um, they are struggling a little bit right now with some retention. Um, it's a very stressful job. Um, they work 12 hour shifts. We also brought up last night, their union um, representative was there talking about a policy for um, the uh, potlucking uh, with the previous dog bite that was uh, brought to light. And then there's been conversation each month thereafter as far as a policy with individuals uh, coming in and out and what the policy actually is for liability purposes. <coughs> um, and it was a really, actually, it was a really, really good conversation. And, and what the, we concluded was kind of keep things as is, but not not announce, like don't announce that we're they're having breakfast or, um, you know, if someone comes in, has to do a lean or, and I don't understand all this stuff. And, and you have an extra donut, give them a donut and a cup of coffee or, you know, there has to be a rapport there. That's understandable. But um, just for li liability safety issues, just kind of toning it down a little bit. Um, they saw our point of view, we saw their point of view. It was it was good conversation. Um, going back to the retention say, uh, and staffing issues, they have one off, uh, one upcoming uh, surgery, so an individual's gonna be off. They have one going on maternity leave soon. Um, Jesse gave a pretty thorough report as far as them coming in, training, after a short period of time, deciding that this job is just not for them. Um, hoping with the system up, grades uh, that brings in some uh, candidates. Also ask them to post it on the 911 Facebook uh, website versus just on Indeed. So if you see that, please share that. Um, she did bring to the board, the 911 director brought to the board. Um, she was approached uh, and asked if she shared uh, the scheduling with the commissioners as far as the on call for night shift, um, which she did not, no. but she brought it to the board last night and let them know that she was approached. Um, and she also said that it is, it is adding extra stress to the night shift as far as the 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. on call um, and making triages and making rough decisions as far as whether or not a call is being transferred um, or not. And also she stated, because the board was concerned about liability issues, um, every call that is made is put out there, whatever that means. I don't have a scanner, um, but every call that is brought into 911 dispatch is put out there for their liability purposes. So then if, if um, that, that they feel is the right thing to do. So questions for me on any of that? That was a little lengthy. I really enjoy that board. Um, they, they're doing a really, really good job. They're very uh, well-rounded. Um, they ask some really tough, dis tough, tough questions um, and they're not afraid of any topic. So. I just got one thing I'd like to add. I got one thing then too. Go ahead. Um, the Parks and Rec meeting that we were at today, um, I was Johnson, our, our mills down or our liaison with the high banks. They would gotten the legal paperwork on through for the friends of the high banks for a 501c3 group. So they'll be starting fundraising here pretty soon. Good. Pretty soon. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He was at our meeting on oh. Tuesday night, and I was just going to okay. bring that up. Yeah. Thank anything, you. Anything else? General public comment. Anybody in the room? Anybody on the phone? Well, I get a campaign. How about mom? Mom, you got three minutes. What? She probably don't know how to hit unmute. Um, oh, she did. Then she put an off button. Okay. No other button. She hit her off button. <laughs> Uh, motion to adjourn at 643. I'll make the motion. Uh, all in favor say aye. Yes. Opposed. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>